Oh, you want a baby? Let's talk. <laughs> welcome back to the channel so I wanted this video to be very super chill like you're sitting down here with me just chit chatting and I always want to do a video about everything I didn't expect to happen prior to having children if you are new to my channel I have two kids two under two one 19 months and one seven months but I really didn't want it to be super formal I don't know if you have my kids, but they're back there. But I wanted it to be like a video that I'm your big sis. And I've been through it all. And if I can help you go through the process any smoother than what I did, you know, this would be the things I would tell you. So I'm definitely going to be realistic. And I don't want this video to feel like I'm bashing parenthood because let me tell you something. My kids is my world and I would do absolutely anything for them like those are my love lines but I'm also very much a realist so if you're new to my channel I like to be real raw so let's go ahead and get to talking oh before I get into it I definitely want to show you my shirt because it's definitely fitting for this video this is what my husband got me it's as tired as a mother yes ma'am yes ma'am all right girl so one of the things I did not expect to definitely happen and I didn't even think it was possible is that how more emotional I would become and how many times I would actually cry now it can be about anything concerning my kids it's just when I think about my kids future especially how today's society is going like the things that I could only expect for them to go through it just makes me cry and if you aren't new to my channel you probably be like girl you did so many videos of you crying but this whole process from infertility to now having two beautiful baby girls have made me so emotional but not only for the sad side of it but even the good part of it like seeing the developments they achieve see them happy see them smiling it just makes me cry like even when i think about how much i love them it makes me want to cry but i did not think it was possible to love someone to the extent that I love my kids. Hey look, it may seem uh, emotional just thinking about it, but I did not expect that I would become like a little mush ball. And, and, and it's a problem for me because actually growing up, I'm more known of being the one in my family that was like a little bit more emotionally detached. But I honestly think it everything as a whole especially in this whole process and journey of parenthood has made me a better woman like so much better so just get ready another thing that kind of coincides with that is on the opposite end is how selfless you have to become in some ways you may think duh like you have to become selfless like no this is a whole nother level of selflessness like literally you do not matter you do not care the way you look you don't care how other people may be looking at you like whatever it takes for your baby to be good the whole world does not matter and I already had some level to this but nowhere near like I wouldn't go out the house looking crazy like you just stop to care I mean just embrace it because it's also very empowering to feel like who cares but on the other side of that I didn't expect how much judgment you would receive as a parent because it's so weird when you're on your TTC journey, you get so much love, embrace, encouragement. And then even when you're pregnant, you're, you're, you're glowing, you're beautiful. But soon after having that kid, you all of a sudden don't matter and everything you do with your child becomes judgment. Like I have personally experienced like 
being in my delivery room receiving judgment from other people i was taken back by that there is so much judgment that happens to you as a parent like someone always feels like they they know it all or they know it better or they do it better or you're doing something wrong or they just feel the need to correct you and it's just like you don't know my kid anything that is at danger of my kid i respect it but at the same time i didn't expect the aggressiveness of judgment that would happen as a parent so that's a part of the reason why they say like you need to get thick skin but in some ways i could still be bothered by certain people's comments on things especially when those people aren't present so please 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 be ready for the unsolicited advice the judgment because I'm telling you it's gonna happen and it's still gonna take you off guard once it does happen but just expect more of it so yeah so kind of another thing that I didn't expect to happen in this whole parenthood journey was relationships being destroyed in a sense um, and I don't really like to say destroyed let me say strained okay because um there's not many things that can't be repaired but expect somebody who you expected to be there may not be there are relationships that i definitely bet it on and i don't have them and that is really sad to me it is probably one of my Hmm. Maybe most unexpected thing, most hurtful things that has happened and you expect those people to, to grow with you as a parent and to be present in your kid's life and or any, any way they want to be there, you just expect to be on this journey with them and to see them not be there, it, it's painful, it's, it's, it's hurtful and this is very sad so expect to lose some people along the way so if they don't i am so happy for you but um just don't be surprised so another thing is and i feel like i um feel like i need to let up my tone a little bit because i feel like it sounds like i'm really sad and i'm not but it's just the way i i, I feel i'm trying to i'm not even trying i'm just being myself but i i just want to come across as realistic and a lot of these things do exert certain types of feelings and emotions when it comes to parenthood. Parenthood is not a joke. That's why you see people acting crazy over their kids because they will die over theirs, child. It's no, it's no playing, no games. But anyway, another thing that I didn't expect to happen prior to having kids, and I need to drink to this one, is that a clean house, especially in the first couple years, doesn't exist like every time you clean it will become unclean i mean obviously if you got a gigantic house and you can be like in some hideaway room area playroom area where there's a tv and everything y'all can hang out cool but for your average joe <laughs> it will be hard so hard especially if you have multiple kids to keep your house clean my house looks like a daycare toys everywhere i swear they go to sleep at night we clean up the house it looks amazing uh, about time the next day afternoon it's a whole junkyard so just be ready embrace it don't feel like you have to always have your house together i just kind of stop caring too it's just nothing we can do it's it's so hard it's hard out here it's hard <laughs> another thing is is that sleep when you're sleeping isn't realistic what i mean is if your babies have multiple naps throughout the day it's not realistic for you to have for you to sleep every time they're sleeping now i think sleep when you're sleeping is a thing you need to do especially in the beginning until you get it down pat of having the perfect cat nap sleep when they're sleeping you need that but it's not also realistic to sleep throughout all the naps you're gonna have to choose a nap that is most important to you 
and nap then and then on the next nap is when you need to clean get stuff done like anything you need to do on the naps is going to be your time to do it so that's why there's so many people that struggle and is so overly exhausted because that's their only time to get stuff done but to sleep through it all especially if you were a single mom like okay mama sounds like shout out i swear i'm not even playing with you shout out to single mom because it is hard like hard they don't have a choice but to get everything done and y'all are superheroes amazing people and i swear they deserve more shine than they do i swear on this one i kind of touched on it a little bit earlier but i kind of want to say it a different way there's a good chance that you will become like those parents that you kind of judge so what i mean by that is those parents um that you go in the store and you think it's so ghetto and they're just opening up stuff feeding it to their kids and they just pay for it to register like you like ooh. but i swear i would do the same thing in a heartbeat now i don't really judge people but i do i probably judge take a second look like Ooh, look at her she ain't playing or you know make a little joke out of it but now it's like who gonna tell me otherwise who gonna tell me like you telling me my kid can't have this or even like parents who have kids that is acting a fool and nine times out of ten that parent feels the same way you feel but they don't have control that's like saying you I have control over you I don't have control over you so kids do what they want to do. You can try your best to to tame them. But if they act in a fool, there's really nothing you can do about it but try to be courteous of other people. Now there's some parents that just like their kids act in a fool and they just kind of like, oh well, I don't care about you. I don't care about your life. I'm not really that, that parent. If my kid was acting crazy or whatever, I'll try my best to be courteous or at least say, hey, I'm sorry or something like that. But now, everything that I deal with as a mom, I'm like, girl, you got it. Like, don't don't worry about me. You good. Like, you will understand those people. Trust me. This one is something that I recently experienced because it's been years since me and David's been on a date. We haven't even been on vacation since our honeymoon. Until very recently, we were able to have someone watch our kids when they were sleeping and we tried to go out on a date night. But one thing I realized is outings and vacations will never be the same. Like, never. You used to can go out and not even have anything left in your mind. I can go eat, I can go drink, I can relax, lay on the beach, not have a care in the world. And as a parent, absolutely not. It does not work that way. There will always be something back in your head like, is my kid okay? Is there sleeping? How's the people doing? Like maybe I should check in, call in or whatever. Like there will always be a piece of you not living in that moment unless you have another clone of yourself or somebody who's just really dedicated to your kid like you would be and even still then you know you just your mind is just still with them at all times so the wait time will never be as relaxed as it was prior to kids one thing i didn't expect is and i gotta itch your mind is how much babies thrive off a of schedule babies need a schedule now i know most people make it seem like it's up to the parent to have given the schedule so that the parent can have a life but it's not really necessary that the babies need schedule babies don't really know what they want they just know what you allow them to do and they like to push the brownies but babies need schedules they need to sleep they need a reset button so putting them on schedule sooner rather than later is very, very important. That's the reason why these kids are very upset because they're not on the schedule. When they know what they can expect to happen, they're most happier that way. Um, I didn't sleep train my first baby until she was one. And now with my second baby, I slept train her at five months and it's worlds are different she know her time she knows when it's time to go to bed she knows when it's time to be up like when they know their time schedules they are most happier because they know what they can expect when they don't have schedules 
it's it's crazy that it's not easy for all babies babies fight with you and it's hard it's hard to see them crying it's hard to see them upset but they need it it's good for their health and eventually they'll follow suit but kind of going alongside of that is not all babies know how to sleep they it's it's something that they learn how to do they learn to soothe themselves they generally get frustrated you know you just naturally think like oh they'll sleep when they're tired no you have to teach them that they're doing this because they're tired and to soothe them and set themselves up for success so having a schedule is going to be very important oh one thing i didn't realize is how important burping is burping is extremely important i feel like it's not really a thing that's talked about but if your baby has eight, especially more so for a newborn, but if your baby is eight and they're just very like moving around and very uncomfortable, maybe seeing a lot in pain, they probably need to burp and they can't figure out how to get it out. I know they, there's this thing that says, burp your baby before and after eating. And this one's kind of important to me too because a lot of people, especially with Nala and some of my videos be like, oh, you're petting that baby too hard. Babies aren't that fragile. This should be a bonus one. Babies aren't that fragile. I don't know why we make it feel like, oh, they're so cute, we gotta caress them. You don't have to caress them that much. Patting your baby like this, and this might see her, it's perfectly fine it is great if the baby was in pain they would cry but you'll notice when you start patting your baby burping your baby rubbing your baby trying to push the burp up they will become very quiet they love the feeling they love your warmth they're very close to you babies aren't that fragile but if they have eight and they still feel very uncomfortable they just probably need the burp and burp is very 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 important okay burp your babies and if they're not burping it's probably because you're not petting enough put that baby up i love the method and i wish i had my baby here but i love the method where you kind of sit them on your lap and this is like the chin of the baby so if you set them like this i always do this put the baby's face in your hand like this and burp them in your lap so this is the baby face and this is bad Put them on your lap and hit the back like this. I do plan on doing a baby's one-on-one -on -one introduction, so maybe I can put it in that video. So if you wanna see that, comment down below to put it in that video, and I will. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is how scary it is to be a parent. I did not expect to gain anxiety, stress about certain things that I used to love to do, and now it's like everything is a hazard for me. Um, being a parent is probably the most rewarding but most scariest thing because you are responsible for somebody and you hear people say that all the time but no you're literally your whole responsibility is to keep this child alive and that is very serious. And it, and it can't be taken lightly because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're touching. I do not take chances with my kids. Granted, I do have more anxiety issues that I do need help with. But I didn't, I could have never seen this coming in my way. And now it's like everything is hazard, very scary. And I take it very seriously with my kids. I mean, cause that's, some changes within yourself you may not be the same person or you will not be the same person you was prior to having kids because now you have to be responsible and that don't mean you have to be boring but you have to do what you got to do so do what works for you do what's best for you and care for your kids and love with your kids because it will pay off in the end but yeah um just comment down below some of the things that you probably would have added to this video let's start a conversation there i definitely love you guys and i'll see you guys in the next video bye girl